Hi, this is Anna Bevan Gravely with NC Free, and I am joined by Fred Von Cannon, who is running in House District 35. Um, Fred, thanks so much for joining us. And before we get started, is there anything you'd like to share with our members? Sure. Um, like Anna said, my name is Fred Von Cannon, running for the North Carolina General Assembly, uh, House District 35, which is Wake Forest, Rollsville, uh, Wakefield, Bedford, uh, all the way out towards Ebulon. So it's Northeast uh, Wake County. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is uh, um, a pretty conservative part of Wake County. I'm a conservative candidate, uh, believe in certainly free enterprise. And so uh, looking forward to this interview. Uh, I'm a, a veteran. I've been in, uh, served for eight years. My son has served, my dad served. Um, also been entrepreneuring for about 30 years. So that's uh, kind of where my passion is. And uh, so looking forward to this. I love the way you phrase that, entrepreneuring, um, kind of like uh, adulting. I mean, the ING on it, it's always great. <laughs> um, so we'll just dive into the questions. Uh, have you ever owned a business or been within a management position of a business? Yes, absolutely. Multiple businesses. Currently, I have a business uh, in Wake Forest. We have 67 employees. Ooh. And um, so we're here uh, at my office right now on Rogers Road. And so we, we have a business that uh, provides uh, Oracle training uh, for clients that buy Oracle software. So mm -hmm. uh, we've just landed uh, Facebook and uh, McDonald's and Western Digital and some in the Army. And so big clients that buy Oracle software, they need mm -hmm. training and they can go to the vendor or they can go to us. So uh, also just started, um, not sure of the sanity of this, but uh, a partner in a restaurant uh, that just opened here about six, seven weeks ago, Prime Barbecue out in Nightdale, just outside of our district, but uh, certainly worth going to. And uh, it's great, great Texas style barbecue. So, uh, and I have another uh, business that, that owns the real estate, so it owns the property that I'm in here, in that property. So um, yeah, love business, have several. Yeah, yeah. So um, I take it you are a barbecue fan. I am a barbecue fan, Excellent. but not, Excellent. hope this doesn't lose votes, but not an Eastern North Carolina vinegar. I think uh, Jesus turned the vinegar away for a reason, so I don't, uh, we don't do that. So. I think we can probably all agree that South Carolina is not great, not the yeah. ideal with the yeah. mustard base. I'll unify on that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, and so would you say that um, our current level of taxation is too high, too low, or just about right? Oh, I think taxes uh, should always go as low as possible to get the minimal amount of government that you need, which is considerably less than we currently have. Um, so I am a very traditional conservative small government um, uh, capitalist. So I think uh, we should continue to lower taxes. Uh, even you know, pre-COVID here, we were still bringing in more revenue than, than we had expenses in the state of North Carolina. So that means they can go down. I think they should go down until until it hurts. And then uh, I think because that, that, that spurs uh, enterprise like it's doing now and, and did uh, statewide, nationally, you saw a lot of boom here in the last few years with, with lower taxes. So uh, it can always go lower and in, 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 all fat, in all phases, I think personal income tax, uh, capital gains, incentivize people to open business. Uh, you know, you open a business and you, and you start a business, create a business to, to eventually sell a business. And so if you look ahead and you, and you know that 30 or 40 percent of your you know um, profit that you worked for is going to get taken currently now 20 percent um, you know in taxes just because then that's a disincentive to even start the business so i'd be a fan of the capital gains uh, tax going to zero um, and figuring out uh, where we can cut government instead of uh, raising taxes yeah yeah thank you um do you feel that it is appropriate for state or local governments to offer uh, incentives to private businesses in consideration of locating, expanding, or conducting business in a particular part of the state? Um, I'm a little mixed on that. I'd probably lean more toward not doing that. I think if you do things correctly, and North Carolina is a good example of this, if you do things and you, and you have a good business environment and you create that business environment uh, organically, empirically, you don't need to artificially do it to recruit a particular employee. Mm -hmm employer. And um, I think I think we've proven that out. I, I, I'm not a fan of, of these huge um, uh, incentive packages. Now, I think if, uh, again, if you have the right, um, uh, you know, North Carolina is a great place, um, a, the best state in the country, for sure. You've got everything here. Uh, and you can, um, you know, I think you can recruit with lower taxes, lower corporate taxes, lower income taxes, 
um, and and bring people here organically without having to artificially do something to recruit to re, to recruit a particular employer. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thanks. Um, and describe your personal opinion as to what the key principles of free enterprise are. I think you've touched on a little bit of that, but if you would be willing to go into more detail, that would be great. Yeah, free enterprise, uh, you know, try to get as much restriction off of the business owner and try to, um, uh, from regulations to taxes, again, personal taxes, corporate taxes, capital gains taxes, um, all the regulation, I mean, the more, the more government you have, the less liberty and freedom you have in a personal way and, and certainly in business as well to, to do things. I think, uh, you know, there there's, should be a, uh, an environment, um, a, uh, a f you should encourage um, entrepreneuring, you should encourage people to open and, and create businesses. And you do that with lowering regulations, giving, um, giving them a, something they can see for that there's a good end to this and a good reason to put their money at risk and to mm -hmm to spend a lot of hours, blood, sweat, tears, time and money away from their family and all that to, to do something. If you don't incentivize it correctly, it won't get done. If you do, it'll return, it'll return good for everyone. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. Um, and this question is a little, um, it's actually super duper timely with the fact that um, we're dealing with conversations on from a federal level and a state level on how to approach COVID um, and COVID relief um, but in your opinion, what is the appropriate balance in the scope of federal and state regulatory requirements on business? And what, in your opinion, is the best way to balance um, those protections without impugning ec economic vitality? Well, um, again, I think sometimes the government protections are, are things that the market could take care of on their own. Um, and e even in COVID, you know, I think uh, that we're being... Um, you know, when you have regulations that, that say you can and can't do this when in left to our own devices, we, we would do mm -hmm. relatively the same thing. I think uh, your, your government gets in the way when it doesn't need to. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big states rights man. I think that, uh, um, that the federal government uh, shouldn't be involved uh, at any lower level than it need be. And its primary responsibility is, is national defense. And mm -hmm. so I think that um, that the federal government typically would get involved a lot lower level than it needs to be and, and things that can be left to the states should be left to the states. Mm -hmm. So uh, whether that is, um, you know, dealing with COVID, a pandemic, whether it's dealing with uh, a financial crisis, whether it's dealing with whatever it is, I think mm -hmm. almost every situation I would lean toward um, the states dealing with things, even things that I don't believe in, things, uh, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm not a fan of abortion. And, but I think that if a state decided that they wanted to have that and vote that in, then that's mm -hmm. constitutionally the way that I, sh that our, our country should work. So uh, if, if states wanted to have certain things and states don't, that's how it should be. It's a federation of states. So mm -hmm. I, I'm, that's where I would lean is, is, is mm -hmm. bring as much control back down to the states as possible and try to take it away from the federal government who have uh, taken it without much pushback over the last few decades. Yeah, awesome. And so, Fred, if elected in the fall, what would be your top three priorities as it pertains to the business community? Well, business, I think it'd be kind of what we've talked about, lower the regulations, um, incentivize small business. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do that in a couple different ways. There's, there's things, again, as you start to think about putting your life savings or, or going out and trying to figure out what to, you know, invest to start a business, it's a big, big risk. And so mm -hmm. the more you can uh, have some expectation that your government is not against you in that process, the better. Mm -hmm. So lower regulations, lower taxes, um, even things like, um, you know, unemployment tax. Uh, we pay unemployment tax here and we have very few people ever that we, you know, that are filing unemployment. So you know, if you don't have any claims for that or workers comp or things like that, that you should have some sort of break on those as a small business. So there's things that government can do to help instead of to hinder. Um, and so that's some of them that I would say. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Um, thanks so much for your time. This has been great. I've loved um, hearing about um, what what drives you, what interests you. Um, I am a lover of of nearly all barbecue except for South Carolina barbecue. So I love that you have a restaurant um, yeah. tailored to barbecue. So that's great. Um, before we close out our time together is where can our members go to learn more about you? 
Oh, sure. Um, the website is votevoncannon.com. Uh, so V-O-T-E-V-O-N-C-A-N-O-N, -E -O -O one N in Canon in the middle. So votevoncannon.com, and that will take you uh, to the website. You can see um, where whatever you want to see there. You can see our positions. There's a tab to donate. That's always helpful. Um, but as you, you know, uh, if you'd like to volunteer for the campaign, it lists several things that you can do. Um, you know, helping us do calls, helping us um, with, um, you know, handing out flyers. Prayer, we'll, that's the top of the list. We'll take that. That's the most important thing, we believe. So, so there's a, a lot of ways that you can help the campaign, and that's, that's a good place to start is just to go to the website, votebondcannon.com. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, and uh, have a great rest of the day, and good luck on the campaign trail. Absolutely. Thank you, Anna. Bye.